My name is Kimberly Hickman, and I'm here for myself, my sister, my brother, and my mother. Almost 21 years ago, I got pregnant. It took me two years to get pregnant. In my second month, I'm glad that the doctor was here to explain what toxemia is. I was diagnosed with that in a severe way. Um, my, at six months pregnant, I almost lost my son because I couldn't eat. Um, I couldn't sleep. I was in such severe pain that I just, it hurt to even lay down. And a reliable source told me, Kim, there is no proven fact that smoking marijuana harms an unborn baby. Well, I was scared because I didn't want to do anything to him, but I didn't want to lose him either. And I'm glad I tried it because then I was able to eat fruit and vegetables. And it got me through. So on Sunday, June 2nd of 1991, I gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby boy. He, no, he was seven pounds, two ounces, and 21 inches long. Had I not done that, our country and our nation would be without one fine, courageous, and honorable Marine who is right here today. He never did drugs. He never drank any kind of alcohol. He is 20 years old today. In 19... I get my notes, sorry. In December of 2007, my sister Stephanie Lee Foster Vise was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. She chose to be treated at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, which is in Zion, Illinois. She got to the point in August 2008 to where she had lost her battle with this disease. She would not smoke marijuana because she was afraid of getting into trouble, so she went the Marinol pill path. She didn't keep it down long enough to help her, and she had the eight months that she lived, was she was sick all the time, and there was no quality. My brother, James Campbell Weir, was given the same diagnosis as my sister in December of 2008. He chose to be treated at the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. My brother chose the path of smoking marijuana. His quality of life was maintained better than my sister's, and he outlived her almost 12 full months. He lost his battle in May of 2010. In February of 2009, my mother, Cynthia A. Gilmore, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer that metastasized her brain. She also chose to be treated at the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I took over her complete care. The doctors gave her oxycotton and ox oxycodone for her pain. My mother and my brother sat together doing chemo. My mother went down to 98 pounds. My brother said to me, enough, Kim. She has to smoke marijuana. My mother had never done anything illegal in her life of 72, 72 years. So I made the decision to get her to try it. She walked out and flopped on the bed without any pain. Within 10 to 15 minutes, she ate a whole chicken pot pie from Kentucky Fried Chicken, a piece of chicken, a biscuit, and two glasses of soy milk, which she couldn't eat at all. Her and I argued. <laughs> so I went to the doctor the next day and told her doctor. And she said, well, I can't tell you, know, you to do this, and I can't tell you not to do this. She gave me a prescription for Marinol. I went to the, the pharmacy to get it filled, and it cost over $600 for a 30-day supply. I take it back, and I'm like, we can't afford this. She gives me the generic form. It was over $400 for a 30-day supply. We can't afford this. So I told my mom, you're going to have to smoke pot because it's cheaper. My mom, the whole time that she was having to smoke pot, she smoked it four times a day while she was doing chemo and doing radiation. She was worried all the time that she was going to go to jail. And here, my brother also. They had more important things to worry about than going to jail for trying to save their life. I'm not saying, you know, kids, kids are going to try things. They're going to do things, and they're going to find a way to get it. They, that's just the way they are. As far as a gateway drug, I drank alcohol and smoked cigarettes before I smoked marijuana. 
It does help with pain. It does help with sickness. And I am here to tell you, if you guys don't want to make the choice, if you're ter worried about voters not liking you to make the choice, fine, take it off your back. Give it to us. Put it on a ballot and let us vote it. Let us be the ones to decide. It is our right to decide, not our government's right. And if you don't want that put on you, then put the burden back on us and let us decide. That's the fairest way to do it. Thank you.